The Skagit, Washington's third largest river that is home to six species of salmon and Puget Sound's largest returns of wild winter steelhead. The Skagit is a river with a storied past among Native Americans, settlers, and anglers in search of the legendary large steelhead that have topped the 30 pound mark. The Skagit River flows from British Columbia through the North Cascades and into Puget Sound. The fertile valleys, sloughs, and low-lying tributaries historically made for nature's own fish factory, pumping out salmon and steelhead in the millions from this prime spawning and rearing habitat. Over a century of development and a reduction of habitat has diminished salmon and steelhead productivity. The Wild Steelhead Coalition teamed up with the Skagit River Cooperative in a project to use LiDAR drone technology to map out and survey a massive habitat restoration project that will once again turn the Skagit's Barnaby Slough into a natural fish factory. If there's any river within Puget Sound where we have a chance at recovering wild steelhead, it's in the Skagit River. The Barnaby Slough project focuses on a stretch of the Skagit River, which is very dynamic, and it's also classified as wild and scenic. Over history, there's been a lot of river migration in this reach of the river, but in modern history, this place was used as a hatchery facility and blocked off from ri river migration and river processes to raise fish uh, in a natural setting. Unfortunately, the hatchery uh, really didn't achieve its goals and was closed down uh, in the mid-2000s. Uh, We're looking at this Reacher River in hopes that we can open up channel migration and river processes such that natural salmon production can once again reoccur in these historic river braids. The reach of the river right now isn't accessible to salmon through these, these old migration corridors and off-channel habitats that salmon use for productive rearing grounds during their life history. This is an opportunity to bring it back to its original channel and um, you know, allow fish to return to the great habitat that they once used. We've had LiDAR surveys conducted in the past here in this gadget. In fact, we use it extensively in our work. The drone technology allows us to move slower and uh, closer and be more surgical with uh, where we're trying to get our information. Our initial feasibility studies suggest that if we are able to achieve our project objectives and be able to reopen this isolated habitat, we're going to see well over four miles of habitat re-expressing itself in the Skagit River main stem area, all of which would be quickly utilized by species in need of extra habitat capacity. In more simple terms, that we could expect almost 2,000 more Chinook to be produced from the Skagit River Basin every year as a result of this project. What's good for the Chinook is also good for the steelhead in terms of the shared habitat usage. The Skagit River is a beacon of hope in Puget Sound wild steelhead recovery. It has one of the best populations in the basin. We're working hard to um, secure it as a wild steelhead gene bank and investing in habitat projects like this only help to kind of ensure the future populations of the fish.